All right, uh, welcome back. Um, so yeah, just to uh, re recap, just do a quick recap of what we've been talking about is God is sovereign. Uh, in his sovereignty, why in his, you know, he is all powerful, good, loving, healing, deliverer. Uh, why doesn't he just invade, intervene, and just heal everyone? You know, and now I'm saying heal everyone. Uh, uh, there has been times as a kid, I've also wondered, like, Lord, if you just showed up in all your majesty, in all your glory, everybody on earth will be saved. Isn't it? Yeah. But again, the humility of God is that he wants us, mankind, to make their own choice, not compelled or forced. You get what I'm saying? If God just showed up in all his majesty, everybody will fall down and know that the day is coming. That every tongue, every tribe will one day confess that he is Lord. It's coming. But in this time, he wants us to choose him by you know uh, our choice by our free will are you with me i think we learned that a little bit about uh, about that in uh, praise and worship as well isn't it like uh, we see that all the other creation of god uh, doesn't have a choice like we read in psalms like the deep sea creatures praise him uh, the trees of the field clap their hands and praise Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Day and night they pour forth speech. Right? Day after day they pour forth speech. All of them have no choice, but they are worshipping him. Only us, as human you know, humans, we have a choice to worship. And it's the same with everything else. We choose him to be our savior. Right? And when, in that moment when we choose him as our Lord and savior, we are healed, we have salvation, we have eternal life, everything. Right? Um, so that, that's the beauty of our God is that he wants to partner with us. He wants to, he expects us to come to him in faith. Uh, in the previous chapter, we saw that uh, we addressed one question. Is it, is it okay to question God or come to him in question or, you know, doubt? Right? Um, and we see the passage where all these Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they want, they came to Jesus only to question him. Now. The, guys listen okay this is very important a life lesson uh, also for our attitudes and everything there is a difference a thin line between asking questions and questioning i'll say that again there is a very thin line or there is a difference let me say it that way between asking questions and questioning so what's the difference What's the difference between asking questions and questioning? Asking question is to know about something, okay? Question. <laughs> yeah, it's spot on, isn't it? Yeah, Sean. Yes, yeah. So the difference basically is you're asking question is you genuinely want to know something, right? You you want to know, okay. You, what time is the class getting over, uh, you know, about salvation, uh, or whatever it is, right? There are genuine questions. You want to know about something. And questioning is, who told you? How come you're right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? So that's, and the difference is, it's not, the questions is an expression of the intent, the motive, the character of the heart. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so when, and it's the same thing with David. There's a difference about complaining to God and complaining about God. You know what I'm saying? David constantly complained to God. It's like, Lord, my enemies smash their teeth against the thing, you know? Uh, but then there is a difference about complaining about God. You know what I'm saying? And again, it all comes down, it's birthed out of the intent, of a motive of our hearts. Okay, so the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law came to Jesus to question him, not to ask questions. By questioning him, questioning his authority, questioning his statements, like, who are you to say this? How can you say this? Uh, you know, uh, who told you to say this? 
how can you say you are the son of God? How can, you know all blasphemy kind of things, you know? Uh, but then there, there was those are people who just came to him in faith. Are you with me? And Jesus healed them, right? So um, <clears throat> God in his sovereignty expects us to partner with him and come to him in faith. And the third point uh, is we walk by the truth that has been revealed and search out what is unknown. We walk by the truth which has been revealed and search out what is unknown. Uh, who's got the mic? Nikhil, the mic is close to you. Why don't you read Deuteronomy 29.29? 29. That's in the notes. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all, all the words of this law. Can you read that one more time, please? The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belongs to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of, of this the, law. Thank you. Okay. okay, the secret things belong to the Lord. Can everybody say that? The secret things belong to the Lord. Okay, and we should be fine with that. Okay. Find a way to be fine with that. Okay, the secrets belong to him. I don't know all the answers. It's okay. Chalega, you know. Yes. Okay, another one. Proverbs 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to counsel a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. That's wonderful, isn't it? I love this verse, Proverbs 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Okay, uh, now again, like we were just talking about uh, this person called Nick uh, who does not have limbs and, and whatnot, right? And that's one of the scenarios, and the questions can be so much like. Uh, in just last two weeks, you just could hear, uh, I mean, I've heard of so many deaths, uh, deaths of a young child, like, you know, two-year-old, three-year-old uh, who died uh, in accidents and fell off the balcony and died and uh, and the Hebal flyover construction, metro construction thing fell and then, you know, a mother and a son died. And then so I'm just using few instances, but then there are instances all around the world like this, uh, for which we don't know the answer to. Yes or no? Right? Uh, it, it's uh, and then there are things that we try to understand uh, out of our wisdom and out of our knowledge, um, but it is absolutely needed for us to come and say, I don't know why this happens. Like, you know, what will you go and tell a mother who is grieving over a son? I can't go and say, okay, it is the Lord's will. She'll, she'll slip on me, you know, punch me or whatever. You get what I'm saying? And at moments like that, it is okay to say, we do not know. It's okay. Because God is sovereign. He knows everything. We have to remember this, guys. Okay. We work for him. He doesn't work for us. Are you with him? We work for whom? For him. He doesn't work for us. He does not owe us any explanation. This is very important, core, fundamental. He does not owe us any explanation. There are times where he chooses to explain. That's his sovereignty. But he does not owe us an explanation. OK, I, I hope you'll understand the weight of what I what we just said. Are you with me? OK, so that leads us to another question. Um, why doesn't everyone get healed? Why doesn't everyone get healed? 
Okay, uh, so who's got the notes there? Nicole, if you can just read a few passages from there. From the section uh, in your notes, why, uh, you have a hard copy, page 97. Why doesn't everyone get healed? Just a little portion there. Uh, we yeah. readily admit that not every person we minister to gets healed or delivered. I am sure that every great healing evangelist and man or woman of God has faced this and also struggled with answering this question as to why we don't see every person we minister to healed and delivered. The answer to such a question is very subjective since the actual condition can vary from individual to individual we do because nice that there can be several things that hinder a person from receiving their healing or deliverance. There could be a, a variety of reasons, some known to us and some reasons unknown to us. Some parable reasons are outlined in a se uh, section below. Okay, thanks. So very quickly, we just pause and paraphrase everything. So we readily admit that everyone we pray for may not get healed, right? Uh, I mean, it's not just the problem that you have faced. I'm sure a lot of evangelists, uh, ministers of God have, uh, men, men and women of God have come across these things. And it says that uh, the scenario can vary from person to person, from individual to individual, right? The reasons can be several, several reasons, things why a person may not get healed. We do not know. But having said that, the conclusion of this question or the answer to this question is those failures or those things, those moments when you prayed for and that person did not get healed, should it stop you from continuing to pray and pursue healing and deliverance? Should it stop you? It should not stop us. The answer is very simple. It should not stop you from continuing to press in. Are you with me? Okay, now you know a mathematical equation. A plus B the whole square is equal to A square. You know something like that. You studied, right? That's an equation, right? A plus B the whole square is equal to something. Okay. So <laughs> when it comes to this, God's side of the equation is never wrong. Okay. God's side of the equation is never wrong okay so you prayed for this person person did not get healed you close the door you seek him you do whatever you have to do you press in you pursue him are you with me right okay you're in the secret place ask lord just fill me more just use me uh, let your power flow in and through me are you with me right so that's what that's what we ought to do and in that process don't compromise the truth everybody say truth Say it one more time, truth. Okay, the difference between fact and truth, we've spoken about it before, right? A fact will inform you, right? But a truth will transform you, right? Fact will change. Okay, weather report, facts, it's so and so. But the truth will never change. The fact is the woman suffered with the issue of blood for 12 years. That's the fact. It informed me. But the truth is Jesus can heal her and he healed her. That transformed her. Are you with me? So just because the healing did not happen when you prayed for, this thing does not happen, don't modify the truth. I think it is the will of God for some of you to be sick. What are you doing? You are compromising the truth, isn't it? Do not do that. In your failures, through your failures, whatever happens in your ministry, uh, don't compromise the truth. Uh, and just in, in hard questions like that, it's okay to say, I don't know. I'm very happy to admit that. When any student asks me a question and if I don't know the answer, I'm very proud to say, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I think in, in what I've also learned in my journey so far is that uh, people will not like you if you pretend to know the answer. You know, so, 
so people will be listening when i'm saying something when in their mind they'll be thinking i this fellow doesn't know what he's talking about but i'll just pretend like okay so i have been there <laughs> okay so uh, i have once been a student as well i'm still a student okay so when you don't <laughs> Uh, so when you don't know something, especially when it comes to the things of the kingdom and whatnot, we've just learned this, that the secrets belong to the Lord, right? Uh, it, it's okay to say, I don't know, but I will continue to stand with you in prayer. I don't know why this happened to you, but I will continue to stand with in prayer. I will intercede for you, right? Be encouraged. That's the least we can do. Are you with me? Right and and ask God for insight. That Proverbs chapter twenty five verse two it says, uh, "It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter." Right. Uh, and Paul writes in Corinthians, "The Holy Spirit searches the heart and mind, the depths of God, and reveals it to us." Are you with me? Right. So you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, you teach me, you show me, you reveal the things to me that I need to know. Are you with me? Right. And what happens in the process is never forget to glorify God. Okay. You glorify God and not the condition. Guys, I want you to listen very carefully. You glorify God, not the condition. You, you prayed for a person with, with, who is possessed with evil spirit and that did not do anything. Okay. So I prayed for Vimal and the spirit starts talking about it. It's like, hey, 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 I'm not going to go. I'm just, you're free. Okay, Vimal. <laughs> right? What do I do? I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to begin to glorify the demon. It's like, oh, the demon is more powerful than God, than the name of Jesus and all of that. Are you with me? Don't glorify the condition. Glorify God. Okay, don't say, okay, just because I prayed and the sickness did not leave, like, oh, I think this is a very new sickness. It's a code 2.0 or something like that. Are you with me? Right, you don't glorify God. Not, uh, you, you, I mean, you glorify God, not the condition. Okay, um, there's this passage in your notes, page 99 in the book, uh, in PDF, it must be something. It's called In Spite Of and Not Because Of. Uh, is everyone there? In Spite Of? and. 65, page 65. Thank you. Um, can someone read that, please? Uh, Michael. God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, and any physical problem. Okay, stop. Thank you. So God can use a person. Okay, God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, or whatever, in spite of their shortcomings. Right? God can use a person. Go on, Michael. However, however, this does not automatically mean that the condition they are in is God's waste for them. Mm. God is not using them because of their sickness or... Stop. Okay. God is not using them because of their sickness or ailment. Okay? God's work in spite of the situation, right? God works in spite of the situation. In I like this line that says, He is not limited by our limitations. He is not limited by our limitations. He works because of His purpose and grace given to us in Jesus Christ, right? Sickness or no sickness, that is why He is God. Wow. So when God uses a person in spite of their sickness or ailment, we glorify God and not the sickness. Okay, so when we see, like, what we spoke about Nick or whatever, it is God using him in spite of his weakness or his ailments or whatever it is. Okay, um, and so we come. We and the encouragement here is for us to pursue more because God wants to heal everyone and He wants to do it through us. Okay. Uh, what another classic question is why are some healings gradual? The opposite of gradual is instant healing. We pray and we see healing right then and there. 
Now, does God become any less God because the healing doesn't happen instantly? Okay, speak to me, yes. Does God become any less of a God? Yeah, Sean. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so God doesn't become any less of a God because the healing doesn't happen instantly. Like we just saw, equation on his end is always right. Right? Um, we see that only once where Jesus prayed for a blind man twice. Like even that, there must have been a reason why Jesus did that. Okay, uh, we read that in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 and 26, uh, right? It says, Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. And he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. Okay, so uh, this is one of the instances, the only instance probably where we see Jesus prayed for a person twice. And so again, the question is, why are some healings gradual? It again varies from individual to individual, scenario to scenario. The reasons are several, uh, but the uh, but the point is that we, in every small, let's say for example, uh, let me use someone else as an example. Or say Francis, uh, he's um, so he needs multiple healing in multiple places, right? His hands need to be healed, his legs need to be healed. Uh, or whatever. So there are multiple healings, isn't it? So you pray for a person, you see only the hand being healed, but his legs are not healed. Are you with me? But that should not stop you or get discouraged. You continue to pray, you be encouraged, and you encourage that person and say, okay, hey, we'll continue to pray for a complete healing, a complete, uh, you know, uh, touch on the hand of God. So uh, again, the simple answer, once again, is we don't know why. why why the healings are, some healings are gradual, some healings are instant, instant. We leave that to God and we do what we are called to do. Okay. Um, and I want to come to the very last section of this uh, chapter because it, uh, the, last the last section, I think it's page 63 or something for you all. Okay. So it's three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. Three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. The first one is faith, expectancy, and intense desire. Say faith, expectancy, and intense desire. Okay, uh, can someone read that section, please, when ministering to people? Okay, Chira, why don't you read? Nikhil's been reading. Three hard attitude that allows God to work miracles. In order to minister, both the, ministering. The next passage. Uh, when ministering to people. Okay. When ministering to people, we must walk in faith, expectantly, stancy, and intense desire. We minister healing and deliverance with faith in our hearts. Our unbelief can be a hindrance to the power of God following through us. Flowing through us. Okay. So, point there. Our unbelief can be a hindrance to the power of God flowing through us. Okay, and sorry, and then go on. We must expect people to get well, expect people to deliver and made well, have an intense desire to see people healed, made well, and set free for the glory of God. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chira. So, as we minister to people, we come in faith. We we come to him knowing that God is a healer. He's a Jehovah Rapha. He wants to heal this person, and knowing that he can do it. Right. And then we come with an expectation. Okay. So I want to see this person healed. 
uh, and so and so. So it says, right, we, we must expect people to get well, expect people to be delivered and made whole, and then have an intense desire to see people heal. The third one we don't talk about much, but it's very important is that intense desire. Do you have a desire to see people healed? Okay, that's two of y'all. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> You have intense desire. There was no intensity. There was no desire. <laughs> right? Do you see? Those are all the fundamentals of it. If you don't have it, it's not just desire. You need to have intense desire. And when you look at the life of Jesus, that's what you see. He healed. He healed. He healed. He healed everyone who came to him. Right? Late in the evening, they brought. He healed. I mean. After a Sunday service, right? A Sunday service and at APC is what say about mm, three hours. Just the service, or two and a half hours. We start at 10:30, go on till what 12:30, two hours. It's not <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so you are we are sound and set up starts at what time? We, uh, the reporting time for worship team is 6:30 a.m. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So six hours. It's a little bit of a stretch. After six hours itself, we'll be like, okay, when do I, I want to go home and sleep? This is too much people. I'm very tired. What I'm trying to say is ministry can be physically tasking. Uh, but then Jesus went through like a long, long days. And he would do that only if you have intense desire to see people healed. Are you with me? So as leaders, as pastors and church leaders, youth leaders, whatever, if you don't have intense desire for the people that you are leading, um, you're not going to see much happen. Are you with me? Okay, so faith, expectancy, and intense desire are the three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. Right? And finally, this last section of this chapter is hindrances to receiving healing. Hindrances to receiving healing. We've uh, covered most of this, uh, but let's cover a few one more time. Okay, this is the last page. So, some of the reasons we've seen this lack of knowledge, right? Lack of faith, considering the ailment as the will of God. Okay, the next point. Lack of persistent desire to get well. So it says the desire must come from you to get well. Right? Lack of persistent desire to get well. Not really wanting to be well. <laughs> okay. I wonder who that is. Okay. Not really wanting to be well. Uh, perhaps enjoying the sympathy and attention of people. Hallelujah. Okay. Perhaps fear of living life with the normal responsibilities once they get well. <laughs> uh, perhaps fear of living well uh, life with normal responsibilities. I've seen that in kids. No, like I want to have more fever one more day, so I don't want to go to school. Why? The responsibility is to study. So I like being sick, so I don't have to go to school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't have to go to office <laughs> or whatever. So. Okay. Um, being passive in resisting sickness. Okay. Being passive in resisting sickness. Wrong posture that leads to a passive belief. If it is God's will, He will heal me. God will heal in His time. Whatever happens in God is God's will, and so on. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, eh, no loss. Huh? <laughs> Uh, wrong heart attitudes, anger, resentment, jealousy, unforgiveness, bitterness, and so on. Anger could be. Um, it, how can anger be a point here? I'm angry with God because I've been praying for healing for so long and He hasn't healed me. I'm angry with you. Why did this happen to my father? Why did this happen to my mother? And that leads to bitterness, uh, resentment, unforgiveness. Um, those are all the attitudes that can hinder from receiving healing. Proverbs 14.30, it says, A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Wow. 
Proverbs 17.22, a merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Okay, um, just on a side note here, guys, your heart attitudes, it's so crucial. Um, just like we need a physical heart check, we need a spiritual heart check as well. Uh, you know, the gospel says that all sin, sexual immorality, uh, all, you know, this and that comes from the heart. But it is the same heart the God, uh, our God is after. He sings, I want that heart. All right. Um, the next two ones, destructive lifestyles. If a person continues to do things that are self-destructive to their health, ex example, alcohol, smoking, drugs, and so on, uh, that will lead to hindrances as well. And the other unknowns. We do not know every cause that could hinder a person from receiving healing and deliverance. Okay, you see that the first line, we do not know. Okay, we do not know every cause that could hinder a person from receiving healing and deliverance. So we learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and He will show us what to do in specific situations. Okay, so those are the points on hindrances to receiving healing. And uh, when you can and if you want to, um, go back to your rooms and upon, just go through those lists one more time. It should uh, come in handy. Okay. Um, so we'll actually stop at that point. Uh, any questions or any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, you want to use the mic? Actually, two people asked me about this question. Like, uh, I mean, uh, if being sick uh, is not a God's will, why so many people are dying because of the sicknesses? Okay. Believers in believers also. Right. They used to pray for a long, long time. I mean, I have seen a person, I have seen personally also, uh, people uh, got sick by the cancer and all. They are uh, good believers. Yeah. So they used to pray for a long time. Yeah. But uh, when we consider this passage, like uh, if being sick is not a God's will, yes. he wants to heal everyone, yes. then why people are dying with the sicknesses? Yeah. So again, we've just looked at that answer. How we respond to that is we don't know. Um, that's the genuine answer to that question is we don't know. As in, we have what we are asked to do is heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, you know, raise the dead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's our responsibility, right? That is our duty. That's our responsibility. That's our side of the commission, uh, and everything else is up to him. Right? We pursue to live a life like Jesus lived. He is the benchmark, right? He is the standard. He healed people. He prayed. He lived a lifestyle of prayer, right? He lived a lifestyle of holiness. There was no blemish in him. So we pursue all that as Christians and whatnot. We do what we can do. We leave the rest to God. The question is, uh, have you done what you can do? Right? Um, and so, it, it, like I said, all these questions are in this book and more because people have asked this, genuine questions, right? And people have asked this, and and rightly so. I have asked this question. I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I have not asked this question. Like, Lord, why? Uh, when my friend's wife had a miscarriage while they've been waiting on a baby for seven, eight years, and when that happened, it's a genuine question. It's like, Lord, why? How is that God's will? How is that God's will? Why, why should we consider that? Was it God's will in the beginning for us to do, uh, go through all of that? It was not. We were our design was perfect, right on it. Like there was no flaw in his design. Sin caused that flaw. It came and left a mark. In, on a beautiful painting, there was a black mark that ruined the look and everything. Right? Um, and so, and, and like I said, and, and this is my personal, so in the last year, 2022, I think from somewhere between August onwards, um, I have always believed God is good. Right, and I have, I refused to put the blame on him when I failed in my twelfth. I failed in my twelfth because I didn't study. 
I, I'm just not going to say like I failed in 12th because you did not give me enough wisdom. You did not make me intelligent. Um, I refused to do that then. And then I saw a very different perspective. I had a different, very, a very different perspective of his goodness. And the statements that I made saying that I work for him and he doesn't work for me was birthed from that season of me encountering his goodness. Uh, and and if he, I have an earthly father, right? I, his name is Rajesh. Um, I would not want to misrepresent him in a very different way that he is not. I will want all my friends to know that he is a good father. How much more will I want my heavenly father to know that he is good? Like I, I really have this zealous, this zeal that I want, where I want everybody to know that he is good. Even if I don't understand, it's okay. But the truth is that he is good. Right? Our situations and our circumstances, they change. Right? One day you will have a good day, another day you might have a bad day, or in one day you might have a good and bad day. Right? Our situations, our circumstances, they go up and down, up and down. But he never changes, isn't it? That's why he's the constant. Like we say that he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? And we you see the book of Joshua, chapter one. Uh, Joshua chapter one. What has happened? Moses has led the Israelites, you know, into the wilderness out of Egypt and whatnot. Mo and and Exodus 40, and between Exodus 40 and Joshua chapter 1, somewhere there, Moses dies. Right? Moses has led them, he has been a leader to the people of Israel, like millions of people, and everybody is panicking. Our leader has died. The leader that they followed in the wilderness for years has died. The leader that would listen to God, speak with God, and come and tell us what to do has died. There was panic in the camp. But God's answer to Joshua is that, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. That means in all this change that you are seeing, I am the only constant. And so that core has to be strong. Uh, you know, I will, I will refuse to blame him for anything. And that's the principle that that's something that I learned in the last second half of 2022 is I will refuse to blame him. That is not living life in denial. Like, you know, understand what I'm saying? That is not living life ignorant or denial. Okay, I'm going through something. I'm not I'm like, no, I'm not going through that. Right? I accept what is happening. But then I will continue to declare that he is good. You get what I'm saying? Anything can happen. That is what, what life is. See, let's say, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's Philippians or something. It says, in everything, give thanks to the Lord. You know that verse that says that? In everything, give thanks to the Lord. That verse will be useless if my life is smooth and absolute filled with joy or every day. It's like that verse was written for days like these, for moments like these. When I'm going through bad times, when I'm going through hell, in everything, give thanks. You get what I'm saying? Right? So, and I think the world needs to know that. Uh, and this revelation of, so this encounter of his goodness began in 2010 for me. I'm just sharing my personal thoughts, sorry, okay, of my personal journey is until 2010, uh, for me, it was okay, God is holy and all of that, nothing changed. But he was portrayed as this thing with a cane, you know, with a stick, he waiting for you to make a mistake and he'll whack you. You know, it was, you know, he is holy, he was like, oh, holy, holy, you know, um, which he is. In his holiness, he is our father. In his holiness, he is good. That's the perspective that it journey began there. It's like, wow, he is our father. Uh, you know, and I think Mark, I don't know which chapter, Mark, uh, where it says, okay, you know, which one of you will ask your earthly father for a bread and who will give you a stone? Are you with me? And how much more should this heavenly father? 
uh, who is so much good, you know so much more good um you know it same thing is uh and i've i've heard young i've had young people you know during the time of my youth ministry uh, come and say is like you know what pastor i i begin to sleep when i start reading the bible and they feel very guilty about it right and i've said this you know what if i'm if my son comes and sleeps on my chest i'm not going to throw him away you get what i'm saying he is the word you know what i'm saying and he's so good and we treat and we may, we have this image that he is like waiting for us to falter and back us but you know if we feel so guilty about small things like okay you know when i'm reading the bible i fall asleep i don't know you know i feel bad about me so i don't know what he's thinking about me while he is such a good father that he will not just chase you away you know what you went you you're going to sleep sleeping on the bible <laughs> you know it's like you are sleeping on his chest why would he chase you away some you know um he is so good than we can ever imagine um yeah and that's the kind of a father the world needs to see uh, the father that jesus uh, you know um showed revealed uh, jesus came to do a lot of things on earth he he came to die for us on our sin, you know on the cross for our sins but in everything he did he revealed the father he revealed the father by healing the blind man right when he stooped down and wrote something on the ground and he stopped the whole crowd from stoning the woman who was caught in adultery he should reveal the love of the father to her are you with me and so uh ministering healing and deliverance reveals god's nature it's not just one part of ministry where we are called to do something okay pray over okay in jesus name be healed and nothing happens okay move on next person <laughs> you know uh you get an opportunity to reveal jesus to someone when you pray so you do what you have to do and leave the rest to god Are you with me okay so yeah let's uh that's it for today and we'll uh, meet again next week and um, move on from where we left off all right thanks everybody thanks nina karen shivkumar for joining us you take care i'll see you next week bye bye